this year we are doing the 2024 Porsche Classic Restoration Challenge. Uh, this is our fourth year doing uh, this classic challenge. Sure is. I'm sitting here with Mark Koenig, uh, the great uh, mechanic. <laughs> uh, is is special, awesome hands that can put this thing together. Uh, my name is Michael DeDio, I'm general manager here at Porsche Delaware. And uh, we're excited to talk about what we have here behind us. Uh, 1958 Porsche 356 Speedster uh, that our owner was able to pluck out of somewhere. Uh, I don't even know where he got where it. Where did it come from? It just appeared one day, I don't know. Yeah. And when, he, when it did appear, what, what was your, your first thought or first steps? Walk us through when you first pulled it into your bay how did you just, what was the first thought that went through your head and where you were going to start with this particular project? Why me? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, in all actuality, um, I looked at the car and, you know, I, I accepted the challenge, it's, especially since I've never done this before uh, on a 356. So um, I pulled it into my bay and just started pulling it apart. You know, I kind of documented it as I pulled it apart so I'd be familiar when I put it back together again. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it was definitely an experience. You know, these cars are actually um, simplified compared to, you know, today's cars. Very basic, but the actual engineering that is behind these cars is actually really impressive. Because in a putting it back together, you know, you have, there's all kinds of measurements and calculations that you have to make, you know, on, on all aspects of the car. Versus, you know, like a modern car, you know, you pull the suspension off, put the suspension back on, you align it, you're done. You know, when you do this car, there's, you know, shims and, you know, spacing and measurements that you have to do, you know, so it's, it's definitely, you know, a lot more involved. You know, similar to, you know, an early 911 as far as, you know, some of the calculations. So talk to me a little bit about the, the body work. I, I noticed that you, you had everything underneath the sheet metal, the, 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 the rust work that you had to do. Is everything underneath this car basically all new sheet metal? Like, how did that work? So, so here, here was the challenge. He didn't want to touch the outside of the car. He didn't want to um, change any of the exterior body panels. Typically speaking, when you get a job this involved, there's you know a lot of removal of panels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This this was completely redone underneath. Probably 85% of the sheet metal is brand new. Wow, mm -hmm. that's impressive. And it was done with the body on the car. There were you know all kinds of bracing was put in place to keep the car the way it should be and stuff. So you know we have new from the front to the back. If you look underneath the car, it's all brand new. Wow. So the suspension components are all original. They've been powder coated, clean, you know, new, new kingpins, new bushings, everything was, you know, that could be replaced to the original suspension. The wearable parts uh -huh. were replaced. The front, we upgraded disc brakes, which is kind of cool. Uh, the back, we got the original drums. Uh, shocks were replaced, spring plates were replaced. So, you know, there was, there was, there was a lot. I mean, there was a lot to do underneath the car. When the owner came to you and asked you to do this car the way it looks right now. <laughs> it goes against everything I believe in because you know when I build the car, I want to make it right. as nice as it can be. He wanted, a, he wanted a, a barn pine. Okay. So that's the theme here. The patina on the car was a challenge. So walk me through, how, how did you get it to look like this and patina it? Most well, people wouldn't even know how to. I had help from some special friends. Think this out. Modern Street Customs stepped up to the plate. Mm -hmm. You know, because they never made a car. Well, this car went backwards. You know, usually you bring a car and you make it look amazing. We had to make this car look like it does. Patina, mm -hmm. meaning stripping the paint and getting the metal to look exactly the way we wanted it to look. So there was, a, there was a process that was done to the car. It took, it took a month and a half to get it 
to look like it does right now. Wow. How about talk to me a little bit more about the in interior? The I interior, noticed like everything so in the, the interior, interior in the car is original, right? Well, it's exactly the way the car was given to me. Uh -huh. So I actually took all the complete interior part. I removed all the carpet that was in the car carefully. Uh huh. And I stored it. How were you able to move, remove the carpet in the car? Oh, with? because it, it was so old that the glue just disintegrated. So it was kind of like dust. <laughs> so it was easy to get out. Did you get sand in your eye? When you I, got sand, <laughs> I got sand in my eyes. I got sand in my eyes putting it back in too. But, um, but I, I, yeah, I carefully removed every piece of the interior, you know, and, and stored it so I could put it back in exactly the way it was because he told me he didn't want to change anything. You know, nothing, wow. nothing new in the car because I want to keep it exactly the way it is. Wow, that's that's impressive. That you were able to put it right back in there the way it is. It looks phenomenal. How about the steering wheel? Talk to me about the steering wheel that you you, you basically need a tetanus shot. Uh, well, <laughs> I was turn. just going to tell you I need to get a tetanus <laughs> shot after driving the car around. So that's that's funny. So yeah. the funny thing about that is is the steering wheel that actually came on this car was a reconditioned steering wheel. Uh -huh. Somebody reconditioned it, painted it it actually upset him. <laughs> so we searched high and low and found an original Speedster steering wheel that was, you know, patina, which you can see in the car, and it's just like original and amazing. It's, it's rusty, it's actually crumbling apart as you drive it. You know what, it looks great though. But it, the but it definitely the follows the theme of the car. That's awesome, it really, really is cool. I, I, you know, I didn't think it would make much of a difference, but after seeing it on But there, it does, it, it changes, you know, when you're, when you're driving the car and you sit in the seat, you know, you're not seeing a bright, shiny new wheel. Right. You're seeing, you know, something that tells a story. I mean, it, it's old and crusty and who knows where it came from but it's, it's, it's really cool. How about the, 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 the parts? Did you have any difficulty sourcing any of these parts for this car, given how old it is? Actually, Porsche, yes. Porsche, do they yes. have Porsche stock has, parts available? Porsche does have stock parts available. Uh -huh. uh, they have you know various engine suspension parts like that. Sheet metal is very hard to get from Porsche. Uh -huh. um, and a lot of the parts that you do need are discontinued. So, but there are a lot of companies out there that do step up and make these parts. That's great. So there's like original uh, manufacturers that still produce the parts that you can get. Uh huh. And oddly enough, there's you know parts that actually cross over to like a Volkswagen Beetle. So, <laughs> that is wild. So, talk to me a little bit more about the the engine. So, original engine. What did you no, do? No, it's, it's not the original engine actually. Okay. So. And that's, a, that's something that we were, that was the deciding factor on what I was going to actually do with the engine. Mm -hmm. So the engine, I, as I pulled the car apart, I realized that the engine was replaced. It's a 1964 engine in the car. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, so uh, at that point, you know, it was fair game to do whatever I wanted. So we did a big bore kit on it. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I put a cam in it. You know, we upgraded the carburetors. It came in with uh, Delorto carbs in it. They were a little tired, so we put some brand new Webers on there. Awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. And I kept the original sheet metal, the fan shroud, everything else on the engine exactly the way I took it off. I didn't clean it, I just put it right back on. So the engine itself is essentially new. Piston cylinders, rods, crank, heads, all new. Um, but all the sheet metal, so the appearance is of all the original stuff that it came with. Uh -huh. Well, I shouldn't say original, but came to me like that. Also, we uh, upgraded the electrical system. We converted it from 6 volt to 12 volt. Okay. So it was a complete new wire harness in the car. Um, instead of a generator now, we have a, a 40 amp alternator. Wow. That appears to be just like the generator, but it's actually an alternator, which is a lot more efficient. Uh, we upgraded the um, ignition to electronic ignition. So there's no points. Uh, it's really tunable, so it's nice. an opportunity to drive with you yeah. uh, the other day and a little little shaky at first oh yeah but I was actually really impressed on how the car felt so soft on the ride right uh, even original torsion bar suspension just with phenomenal brand new factory Coney shocks uh-huh and it's just yeah the ride is is nice you know funny enough you said the ride smooth wait till you know it drives on the new tires yeah. I mean it'll be even better 
<laughs> That's great. I'm excited. I can't wait. Is there anything else that you would have done different with this project that you just completed? Yeah, I would have restored it and made it pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't have gone with the owner's vision. <laughs> That's right. So, I mean, differently. But who's to say he may rest have you restored afterwards and I, redo I back, back to paint? He, he might. He yeah. actually does have a really nice uh, 1957 speech that's been restored and updated uh -huh. and stuff like that. So I think it's a really bold statement and it was it was a really fun project. You know, it was frustrating. It was very frustrating uh -huh. at times because um, uh, knowledge base. So right. I'm definitely a lot more uh, versed in 356 than I was when I started. But uh, I would definitely do another one. Awesome. Well, I want to thank everybody uh, to listening in, tuning in. Uh, we are going to see everybody out in Chicago, August 23rd. So mark the calendar. Uh, mark myself, uh, our owner, Dan Piazza, will be out there. So uh, come out and, and check us out. It's called Check It Out Chicago. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Our we're, fourth year in a row. We're really excited, and uh, we'll see you then. Until then, thanks. Thanks a lot.